Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. We've got a full step-by-step -step guide tonight showing you how to replace the dual mask flywheel and the clutch kit on this 2013 BMW 1 Series 118 diesel. Uh, two litre diesel it is. Obviously we're using two poster ramp today, which does make the job a little bit easier. Uh, if I was doing it uh, without the ramp, all I'd do is just jack it up really high on both front sills there and put it, put it on some axle stands just to give you some decent access. Um, I'll just show you quick, um, we're using all LUK bits. Now, if you check out the description at any point in the video, I'll put links to part for part numbers to all the bits used and all the tools that we've used as well. You can see the LUK kits come with a new clutch fork as well, new bearing, and then the actual plate there and that bit as well. So, and then we've got a dual mass flywheel. Uh, but to start with, we'll get the vehicle up in the air and I'll show you what we've got to do next. Um, if you um, Just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, if you wouldn't mind just clicking the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Uh, but we'll get it up in the air now and uh, get to the first step. Right, so now that we've got, we've got it up in the air, these BMWs have uh, quite a few under trays underneath them, so we're going to just take some of the under trays down. Basically this main one at the back here, and just the one in front of it as well, like the engine one. So, and all you've got is just a load of 8mm bolts all the way around. So the first step is just to get the under trays off, and that'll just give us a bit of room. Um, but basically, the gearbox is rear-wheel drive. The gearbox is coming out the back here. Um, we're going to need to disconnect the prop off, but I'll run through you each bit at a time. But to start with, we'll just get this under tray down. So the under tray is off now. There's quite a lot of 8mm bolts holding that up. Uh, now we're coming underneath. The next step we're going to do is just unbolt at the prop at the back. What I'm going to do is take the bolts out from this side and through. I'm just going to paint mark the prop to this bit of rubber here as well, just so I know. Let's just put it on back on in exactly the same position. Uh, but if you undo the, uh, the prop bolts there to get that off, you've got three, three bolts holding that on. And then we're going to take this guard off from underneath as well. So. Uh, while we do that there, as we take this obviously back guard is supporting the gearbox so just as I do that I'll just use the transmission jack uh, just to support the actual gearbox itself. Obviously if it's on the floor all you'll do is just put the jack underneath it with a block of wood just to support the box. So we'll get them bits down next. Put it out as well, just to get the prop bolts off, you're going to want two 18mm spanners and then 13mm socket for the support bracket. So that's the mount down. There's just the four outer bolts and the two nuts on the centre where it goes through the two studs there on the, uh, you see the two rubber uh, brackets on the gearbox there. So. Right, so now that we've got the bracket off, we're just gonna um, drop the gearbox down slightly. The next thing we're gonna do, just got a few bits to take off. Um, there's an earth strap here, we'll be unbolting that. Uh, you need to get the, detach the, exhaust from the gearbox here so we've got these 413s for the bracket there and there's some e torques as well and you're going to need a uh, e e11 e torque socket for that so i'll put some links in the description below to all the parts used but that's for these two bolts there to get them out and then we're going to need to take this cover off at the bottom which again is held on with some more e torques up there as well and then just coming around this side of the gearbox we've got a couple of connectors up there this one needs to come off. All you need to do is just push the little tab in there and you can just work them off. And then there's the actual slave cylinder for the clutch as well. Just this black bit there. So all we're going to do, take that off. 
and we're gonna get the bracket off which is held on again with the 13 mil there and that's the same 30 mil that actually holds the slave in so there's one on the bottom of the slave and there's another one around the top of it so we take them two out we'll get the slave sunder out and drop that to drop that down as well we'll get them all them bits off and then move on to the next stage we Right, so that's all then, but it's dropped out of the way. Uh, the slave cylinder was actually held on. Um, it was two studs, just two nuts holding it on. So it's quite handy these being an external slave. It means that um, you can just simply disconnect this and just hold, hold it aside. You ain't got to worry about bleeding the clutch up when you put it all back together. So all we're going to do, we might just try and just rig up a cable tie, just holding the slave in just so that it doesn't pop out. But it's only a bit of a precaution, really. They're normally not too bad and then I'll just tie the slave up out of the way just so we don't catch it while we're doing it. Um, we'll just tie that up quick and then uh, all we're gonna do after that is just drop the gearbox, just lower the gearbox down slightly. Just gonna show you a bit clearer. Just lower the gearbox down a bit more and then we're gonna start getting some of the main bolts out. We're still gonna leave it fairly rigid for now just while we uh, get some of the bits on the top off and show you how to release the gear lever and stuff next. So, uh, we'll just get that down a bit. Just show you quick there what I meant with the cable tie. Basically just rig that up. Just a bit of a precaution just to hold it in. Just so if it does pop out, you can put them back in, but it'll mean bleeding the clutch up again. So that just ensures we ain't gotta worry about that happening. So uh, so we've just dropped it down as far as we can now. All I had to do is just uh, just use a little pry bar just to um, just to ease the prop out, just as I lowered it a little bit. But next step we're gonna to have to do now is release these rods at the top. You can see this rod here, it, uh, this top one here, and it connects onto this bracket here. And what you want to do is you use a, a bar or screwdriver and you need to flick this, basically flick that off, it comes around this way, and you can slide the pin out. And it's the same again on this side there, and pry it around and then it'll come out. I'll try to show you on the camera if you can. A pretty simple clip to get out really not bad design we'll do the same again on the other side um, oh, so the other one you can just sort of see it just try and get it in just and then this one here below it you just need to flick that tab up on there might not be able to show you on the camera this one and flick it downwards and then you can release the pin on the opposite side I'll just get the other side one out now and that one off as well. That's the clip off now. I can just push the uh, pin through and pull the rod out there. And that's got the gear change off and we should be able to drop the, uh, the gearbox a bit more now. Right, so now that we've done that, we're ready to take the main gearbox housing bolts out. Um, just some of the wiring as well, you ought to just check. It's held in by little clips. 
around the gearbox so you ought to just flick them off just little plastic clips uh, just push onto lugs on the gearbox just make sure you flicked all them off before you drop the bolts down and now we're going to work our way around undoing these big e-torx bolts um, i'll just check what size they are and just let you know in a minute but uh, there's quite a few of them around it um, you just see going up there a couple close to the top as well and then there's two across the top that are a little bit awkward to get at obviously you've got to try and uh, just get your hand up and round the side here with the uh, with the ratchet on it and a long extension um, if you sort of get a couple of extensions so that you're working from the back of the gearbox it does make it a little bit easier um, but we'll get them out now and uh, start getting the gearbox down I'll just check what size they are quick for you yeah, it's just what an E16 e torque socket to get them uh, get all these gearbox bolts out we'll get to work getting them out now uh, <coughs> Right, just to give us a bit more room, I've had to do it on these BMWs before. We are just going to take this heat shield behind the, um, the back of the gearbox here. Just going to take it down as well. You've got some more eight mils on there, and you just need to take this bracket out here, which is some. Uh, you just want some torque spits, three torque spit on either side to get that out. Um, but all that does is just gives us a little bit of room when having to get the top uh, bolts out of the gearbox. You need to get up the top here with some long extensions and the heat shield just gets in the way a bit so it doesn't take long to get them off and it just it's just makes the job a little bit easier so whip that down now and then we'll start to work getting the gearbox out that's a t50 torques you're going to need just for them uh, bolts for the support bracket Right, so we've got all the main bolts out now uh, there's six of the big bolts and then you've got some little some of the little torches this is the last one there just left that one in just to uh, just so it's an easy one to access before we uh, fully drop the box down there is one sensor or connector right on top of the gearbox so it's a little bit awkward to get um, this is the plug for it there um, it's got a little tab on it to flick it up to pull it out um, we just need to make sure you get that off before you drop the gearbox down um, it is a little bit awkward I had to get a mirror up then it's just right on top but when I've dropped the box down um, I'll just show you the connector on top and show you how you actually get it off so uh, but for now I'm just going to undo this last bolt and then we'll drop the gearbox and get it out So that's got the gearbox down. I'll just show you, this is the connector right on top of the box. And all it is, just pushes in. Obviously this is the little tab here, just need to flick it up. It's a tricky thing when you can't see them, just knowing uh, what, what you've got to do to get them off. But at least you can see it there, that should help you a bit. So. Uh, obviously we've got the clutch up here now. Next thing we're gonna do is just get the clutch plate off and then we'll get the flywheel off. Obviously to get the clutch off, we've got all these uh, Allen bolts around the outside. So. I think there's six of them. Yeah, six in total. So we'll buzz them off and then we'll get the flywheel off to start with. Also as well, just to make it a bit easier for you, I forgot to say, obviously, it does actually sit down on the supports. So, all right, so um, 
once you've once you've done it you can just take the the support out the, the vertical jack or the jack off it as well so just makes it a bit easier working without that in the way and to get the clutch plate off you're just going to want a six mil allen key Clutch can just get a little bit tight on the dowels. So that's what you use a flat blade screwdriver and just work it. Just gently pry it off the flower. So that's the clutch plate down. You'll see the reason we're placing this one tonight is quite badly worn really. It's just uh, wearing the uh, nearly wore in the uh, nearly down to the bars on the edge yeah. there on that side. And again you can see it on the inside here, so pretty knackered that one. It's not the worst I've seen but definitely ready for changing. So next thing we're gonna do now, we've just got the flywheel. Now you might find um sometimes they're not quite lined up and you've just just adjust the flywheel round, round slightly to get your Torx bolts out. Obviously there's eight Torx bolts in there and you're going to need a Torx 60 socket to get them out. Uh, sometimes these dual mass flywheels can um, sort of break up and you might find that you can't twist it to line them up. If that does happen it is it is a bit of an issue we've come across a few times. Um, and it's a bit of a rough way to get them off but you'll actually have to cut with the grinder. Just cut these centre bits out and then you can get the outer off to get the bolts out to get the flywheel itself out. So, um, but we'll just use a Torx 60 socket now and get the flywheel off as well. I fa always fairly tight the bolts because uh, they're locked tight on. So that's the flywheel off now. Obviously it was pretty tight in the centre here, so we just had to pry it a bit either side. Um, but behind it, you do need to be a bit careful if you are prying, because you don't want to be catching this plate. Uh, this is the crank sensor coming through there, and this is a ring uh, that's actually loose, just sat loosely on there. And that's what the timing, that's what the crank sensor picks up on. Um, if it does, it has got a locating peg there, so you can't get it wrong. Um, you sure to leave that in place there. Obviously, if you had an oil leak, if you've got any oil, um, so are quite common to the rear mains leaking, you can see this is bone dry around here, but if they have got an oil leak, the crank sensor is situated behind this plate. And all you do is just take that plate off there and your crank seal, uh, your crank seal is sat in there. So, so if you just need to uh, replace that, obviously that's a case of just uh, getting that seal out, flicking that out and putting the new one in, but see ours is absolutely mint, so you ain't got to worry about that. And just put that back on. And we've got the old flywheel here. It should have a bit of side to side movement in them. Uh, but on this one, it's actually got, you can nearly just keep turning it all the way around. So it's got far too much side to side play there. So it does make the job pretty expensive when doing the flywheel. But if you're going to do it, it's going to, well, hopefully last another 80,000 miles. So it's always worth doing it at the same time. Um, but I'm going to put some links in the description below to all the new parts, the part numbers, and you should always renew the bolts as well. So I've put some links to where you can get them from. Um, also, uh, I'm running through the torque settings when we're putting it back together as well. What we're going to do now, come over to the gearbox. Um, before we put the clutch plate on, we've got the old release spare in here and the clutch fork. We'll get this off now and swap that over. And we'll run through that next and just give it a bit of a clean up in there. Uh, so I'm just going to give us a quick wash down with some brake cleaning now and then we'll get the fork off but all you do is just this little um, metal clip hanging around you can just flick that off I'll show you that in a minute and um, get that out and pull the release bearing off
just flick that around the back and you can slide that off as well. Also, I forgot to say it, I do like to use these LUK um, clutches really rather than the cheap quality ones. But you come, this is the original clutch come out of it. See the original one come out, it's still LUK one as well. The BMW stamp on somewhere, yeah. You can see the BMW stamp on it as well, but it is just an LUK one, so that's we're ba basically going to be replacing it for light for light. So, fit these LUK clutches, you don't generally get problems with them, like some of the cheaper clutches. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got the release bearing and the uh, out the, release bearing out of the way. You just want to check that, uh, that none of these caps are leaking while you're in here. Um, but this is the uh, obviously what the guy what the release bearing runs on. You want to just check it's nice and smooth. If there is any rough edges are out on there, just give them a quick clean up with a bit of emery cloth. But to be honest, this one's not too bad. There's a couple of little bits that I'll just clean up on there. And all I'm going to do is just run a little bit of uh, white grease on there as well, um, just for uh, just for the new uh, release bearing to run on. Don't need too much on there, just a little bit. And we'll now put the uh, the guy tube and bear in as well. Also, just a quick bit of good practice, really. I mean, I'm pretty confident this is the right clutch, but when changing the clutch, before you mount all this back up, just something you want to quickly check is just get the clutch plate and just make sure that the splines line up with the gearbox. As long as they go on there, it just saves you mounting everything up and then finding out it's the wrong clutch. So it's always just worth checking that first. That's a new bearing mounted into place. A little bit fiddly just to get this clip round. And I just put a bit of grease round here as well. But this runs in the uh, spigot bearing on the flywheel. So, uh, but once you've got it on, just make sure that moves just nice and freely there. Obviously, it's not going to come past that point there. So, as long as you make sure that moves nicely, yeah, that's ready to go back in. Next thing, we'll uh, get the flywheel mounted back up. Um, also, also, just while it's out, I'll just show you as well, just something to take note of. And um, the clutch plate itself, it does normally say gearbox side on it there, just so you uh, just so you can't, because it is quite easy to make the mistake of putting it in the wrong way around. So obviously this side here is going towards the gearbox. So uh, and also and on this um, these LUK ones, I've just got this plate in the centre here, and what that is, it's just like an alignment tool to keep the spring the the uh, little springs nicely in place while you bolt the clutch up. And what you do is you bolt it all up. And when it's all together, we'll just put a big Allen key in there and just twist that and it'll take it out. It just keeps all these nice and taut and even while you're bolting it up. So to start with, we'll bolt the flywheel up now and I'll run you through the torque settings. So we've got the new bolts here as well. So you should always use new bolts. Um, you can see we've got some lock, so if I get on the picture, the uh, camera there, they've got Loctite on them as well. So the torque settings for these is 120 newton meters. What we'll do is we'll buzz them all in just just lightly and then we'll run round them one by one we're going to have to lock the flywheel with the screwdriver um, in the two before we do it so we'll do that in a minute yeah, just one last thing just forgot to mention quickly just before putting the flywheel on the locating hole that i was on about earlier on the uh, the crank there does have a locating hole that it marries up with on the flywheel as well so you can see that's got a line up with that hole so just take a quick note of that before you put it on
so just run the flywheel then because it's really tight so to work it round evenly just to pull it on nicely and what we're going to do is we're going to put a bolt in the hole there and that'll just give us something to um put the pry bar in and just hold it against one of the teeth there just so we can torque them up now so the torque setting is 120 newton meters So ready to mount the tool up now. Um, obviously, we, we haven't got the correct clutch alignment tool. And what you would normally do is just put your clutch plate in and eye it up from the other side through this hole here. Um, but this has got the this little locking plate in it for the uh, springs on the clutch plate there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to just roughly line. You need to get these pretty central just so that your gearbox slides in nicely and lines up with the splines. What we're going to do is try and hold it tight sort of roughly even all the way around the edge while we mount it up we'll bolt it up and then take the centre plate out and if it's not quite in line all we'll have to do is slightly slacken the outer plate off and then we should be able to move this just to line it up a bit better uh, but we'll hold it in and we'll get it bolted up now uh, i'm going to re, re renew we're going to reuse the uh, old clutch plate bolts this time Now that's there, we're just going to get a 14 mil, 14 mil Allen key and just turn that anti-clockwise to release the uh, fork holder. Quite a little bit tight because it's holding the springs. Without we've done that, we can release that plate there. Let's pull that line up. Yeah, I ain't quite worked that. It's, uh, it's not really a problem, but it's uh, a lot of clutches don't really have that plate in there. But you can see as we've done it, the um, clutch inside has just dropped down a little bit. So it's not really a problem. Oh, well, it's a good idea if you've got the proper BMW w tool to do it. What we're going to do is just slacken these the uh, Allen keys back off. And then what you need to do is just basically line this up nice and central to the centre of this uh, this plate there so it's just so that your gearbox as it slides in the shaft just slides straight in nicely so we'll slacken these off quick and line that up a bit better and then nip them back down and torque them up So just a little adjustment there, but you can see now it's all nice and lined up in the centre. That's where we want it. So we'll just torque these uh, Allen bolts up now. So same as the flywheel bolts, 120 newton meters. Uh, exactly the same way we did with the bolt again. So just nipped all them back up. I haven't done them to the um, the auto data torque setting, saying 120 newton meters, but it, I thought it was a little bit tight. Anyway, that's a, I didn't. Uh, I just know by feel it, it feels a bit too much to, to me. So I've just done them. Uh, I've done them up. I reckon it's about between 80 and 90. So, but I've just done them nice and tight. I'm just giving them a good check by hand. But it's just a good nip, really. Um, they don't want to be mega tight, so I'm pretty happy at that. Uh, but that's done. We'll just. Uh, we're ready to lift the gearbox back up into place. So what we're going to do is just lift it up. Because we've got that nice and in line now, the gearbox should slide in there nicely. It might just take a bit of wiggling. And then once we've located it, we'll just put one of the bolts in to pull it into place. Right, just before lifting the gearbox up, I'll just show you as well. I did this earlier on, but I did just um, cable tie the prop and these gear levers uh, up and out of the way. Just makes it a little bit easier. They're not dangling loose and in the way then. Or you're trying to work around the gearbox. So, um, let's get it up. Yeah. 
Uh, it's just took a bit of wiggling, jiggling to get that in. Um, well, you just got to be careful of when you're putting it in. Sometimes you just start to twist it a little bit to get the uh, splines to line up correctly. Um, but there's a little dowel just in there. You need to make sure that lines in. And all we did is just got it pushed in, just put one of the bolts in, and just wind that in gently, and you'll just know if that's just pulling nicely onto the dial, onto the dowel there. So. Uh, but what we'll do next, we'll go around, get all the main gearbox housing bolts back in and then uh, run you on to the next step. Right, so just give the all the main uh, big e-torx bolts a good nip now. I ain't got the proper torque setting for them, but they just want a good nip by hand really. Uh, that's been mega tight. Uh, now all we're gonna do is just start getting it built back up. Uh, obviously we've got the um, we've got the slave. We're gonna jack it up a little bit. We've got the slave to put in. Just when you're putting your slave in, you just need to make sure you line it up. Obviously just locate it in line with the uh, clutch fork there. But just bolt that back up. Uh, we've got the earth to put back on, there's the connector on top, all these bits of wire and just locate them back into place. Uh, eventually we'll just push it up and then line the prop back up with their marks that we put on it earlier on. Uh, bolt the prop back up, slide the uh, all the pins back in for the gear change. Um, I think that's the main bits of it. We'll just bolt them all back together quick uh, and then get on to the next bit. Right, so that's pretty much all the underneath built back up. Um, all the gear, all the slaves are all back on. So because this is an external slave, we haven't got to worry about bleeding it up or anything. Um, but you can see, it's not been a bad job at, at all to do, really. Um, but I'll put links in the description below if you just check that out to all the part numbers and all the tools used. Um, all we've got left to do pretty much now is just put the two under trays on. Obviously there's about 20, 25, 30 bolts holding them on. We'll drop it down, just make sure the clutch pedal feels all right first. Then just start it up, just run it through the gears, just make sure it feels like it's biting all right, and give it a quick road test. Um, but yeah, so it's not a bad clutch to do at all, really. 
and really you could you could really get away without um, using the jack just take the weight of it to start with and just drop it down and the weight supported on the front there so uh, but yeah i thought i'd share the video with you all hope it helps uh, if it did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel um, but thanks for watching and uh, i'll just let the video run just till we get it off the ramp but uh, yeah thanks for watching again we'll see you next time